Hey everyone, I hope you all had a happy new year. I originally had several videos planned for December, but the holidays just sort of kept me from making any of them, and frankly, I just needed a break from all the social media nonsense. But I'm hoping that this video makes up for my absence before I disappear again. As you can probably tell from the thumbnail, for this video I am drawing lion from the original Thundercats. This was actually my final drawing of 2023. So far I've only ever shown videos of me drawing simple sketches, but now I really wanted to just go a bit wild and show off my drawing skills. I tried my best to recreate the overall look of Thundercats, the art style. You might notice that I struggled a lot while drawing the sword, but other than that, it really wasn't that hard for me to mimic the art style because the look of the show was already one of my inspirations. Like that Rankin Bass anime art style like The Hobbit and The Last Unicorn, Thundercats. If you've ever seen my fantasy artwork, you'll notice that I borrow a lot of the same motifs, like the way they draw things like wrinkles and ripples in people's clothing. The characters are very exaggerated in anatomy. Though I think my artwork borrows a lot more elements from both Japanese manga and American comics, I try to combine elements of things that I admire. So pretty much, Thundercats was a pretty big influence on my artwork. If you can't tell, I'm trying to avoid telling boring stories about nostalgic memories because I made that mistake before when I did the C-Lab video, but just to sum it all up, I got into Thundercats because of my older brother. That's actually how I got into a lot of old stuff. He was the 80s child and I was the 90s child, so I got to see a lot of the same stuff that my brother grew up with, like Transformers and Voltron. But out of all of the 80s cartoons that my brother showed me, I think Thundercats is one of the few that still holds up. I understand that there are a lot of fans to a lot of these other shows, but I always had a hard time getting into a lot of them. They had their moments, but I think some people look back on some of these old cartoons with rose-tinted glasses, and that's fine, I'm not trying to bash people for liking these shows. But what I will say is that, at least Thundercats tried to set up a story arc for the main character. Like, at the beginning of the series, lion is very immature and irresponsible, but then as the show progresses, he becomes more wise and honorable as a leader. It did not just feel like it was made by a focus group. It actually seemed like it had some artistic value, and you don't really see that with a lot of those old Saturday morning cartoons. But I'm rambling now. The reason I was actually inspired to make this video was because there was this Facebook group I follow, I think it's called like Retro Flashback or whatever, and they submitted something recently asking followers, what Saturday morning cartoon would you like to see adapted into a movie? And quite a number of them were talking about Thundercats, and personally, I have very little interest in a Thundercats movie at this point. There have been rumors of a Thundercats movie for way too many years. It's just like every time they announce a new Spawn movie, and it never happens. Does anybody have faith in these movies getting made? Because I don't. They can announce all the actors and directors they want, but it doesn't mean anything. There are countless movies that get announced every year, and most of them never get made. Keep in mind the Mario movie was hoaxed for over a decade. Hell, all the way back in 2009, there were talks that James Wan was going to direct a Castlevania movie, and that never materialized. If there's ever going to be a Thundercats movie, I'll believe it when I actually see it. You know, this is why I always regret announcing projects, because plans can always change, and when it doesn't happen, then people start to lose interest. It's better to just keep everything under wraps until something has actually been complete. And that probably makes me sound like a hypocrite because this video has been delayed several times. I'm sure that someday there will be a Thundercats movie, but nothing has been confirmed, so any rumors are all just nonsense. If it does get made, then there's a 50-50 chance that I'm going to skip over it. And I know someone's going to say, oh, he's just saying that, he's going to watch it. But you know, you have to understand that I am very strictly against hate-watching because hate-watching is how you end up with even more lousy content. And some of you might think I'm a hypocrite because of that Fire and Ice video I made. But remember, when I read that Fire and Ice comic, I was actually hopeful that it would be decent, despite all the red flags, and I got disappointed. That's not the same thing as, like, hate-watching or hate-reading. But there are so many people that go into these reboots with full intention of hating them, and it's just stupid. There's no point in watching something that you already know you're not going to like. It's as simple as that. As long as people keep paying to see these movies, they're going to keep making them. Like, back in 2016 when the Max Steel movie came out, 
I basically pulled a James Rolfe. I, to this day, I still have not seen it because I knew that it was going to be a bad movie. And before I go on, I just want to make it clear that I have nothing against the people who like any of these movies. I'm just here sharing my own honest thoughts. I just think that skipping over something is more mature than hate watching. I also skipped over Kevin Smith's He-Man and Michael Bay's Ninja Turtles. And as you can probably guess, I haven't seen Seth Rogen's Ninja Turtles either. But something that I've noticed is that there are two kinds of nostalgia bait movies. For starters, you have the movies that are constantly trying to remind you how great the originals were without establishing an identity of their own. That's basically how I felt back when I saw Jurassic World. Aside from the lousy storytelling and special effects, the whole trilogy is literally just the writers making constant references to the original Jurassic Park. It's like, oh look, the goggles, oh look, the jeep, oh look, the shaving cream can. The whole thing's just like an easter egg hunt. I feel the exact same way about those new Planet of the Apes movies, and I, I happen to know that those are written by the same people. And maybe this is just a conspiracy theory, but it just seems like a cheap way for filmmakers to distract the viewers from lousy filmmaking, just keep reminding them of much better movies. And not only that, but it seems like every franchise ever since the Avengers movies came out, Studios have begun spending more time building up extended cinematic universes rather than just making a good movie. Like you got the MonsterVerse movies, but you might remember that Universal also tried doing their own MonsterVerse movies with like Dracula Untold and the Tom Cruise Mummy reboot. Universal was planning to do crossovers with those versions of the classic monsters, but since they were complete failures, it never happened. I've even heard that Warner Brothers wants to create a Mattelverse starting with the Barbie movie. And of course, Illumination wants to make their Nintendo-verse. Now, look, I will admit, I think it is cool that these studios are trying to interconnect all of their franchises, but I just wish that they would focus on one movie at a time. What I mean is, rather than constantly trying to build up an extended universe for later movies, they should instead try to tell one cohesive story. They should treat each of their films as standalones before they start setting up crossovers because it seems like all they're doing is setting themselves up for failure. The reason it worked so well for Marvel is because they were smart about making their first few movies into standalones. It made sense. Not only did they make a bunch of awesome standalone movies, but they were able to build on top of those films to create a successful cinematic universe. That's how you do it. And not just that, but Marvel also has a lot of money, so they can afford to invest in a cinematic universe. A lot of these other studios can't. So whenever one of these movies fails, then these studios have just wasted millions of dollars trying to build up a cinematic universe that's never going to get made. But now that I've explained the first kind of nostalgia bait movie, now let's focus on the other kind of nostalgia bait movie. The ones where they rely on outrage bait and meta humor. Not all meta humor is bad, sometimes it can work, but when I say meta humor, I'm talking about when the whole movie is just the filmmakers mocking the originals. But with Outrage Bait, filmmakers will oftentimes make highly questionable decisions, not because of some misunderstood vision, but because they think it'll give the movie some kind of notoriety. Like, for instance, that Rescue Rangers movie. Even though I never liked the original cartoon, I happen to know that that movie is a perfect example of Outrage Bait. That Bobby Driscoll controversy was clearly done on purpose to make people angry. You really think that was a coincidence? They knew that it was going to piss people off, and that's exactly why they did it. The reason that these studios like to stir up outrage is because they believe it's going to get more people on social media talking about these movies, and more people want to watch them, just so they can see the controversy. That's exactly how they sold Bill & Ted 3, Toy Story 4, Terminator Dark Fate, and that new Indiana Jones movie that nobody watched. As the old saying goes, there's no such thing as bad publicity. But the problem with that logic is that this type of stuff is not publicity. Despite what some people think, the majority of moviegoers are not scouring the internet for movie controversies, and they're definitely not reading geek articles whining about Star Wars for the millionth time. But for some reason, a lot of these studios now seem to be relying on word-of-mouth social media outrage to sell movie tickets, and it's not working because the only people who pay attention to all those articles and controversies are obnoxious fanboys. Which brings me to my next point. Whether or not you love or hate all these reboots of old franchises, I feel like a lot of these studios are actually having a negative impact on fandoms. Usually when a movie gets negative reviews or fails to earn back its money, 
the professional thing to do would be for the studios to just move on and try to make better movies. But instead it seems like every time that one of these reboots fails, the studios and filmmakers always blame the fans. And look, I know that it's a tired and old subject, but every time they blame the fans for these reboots failing, all they are doing is pinning the fans against each other, which of course leads to gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is basically when someone tries to pick and choose who should be accepted into a community. And unfortunately, it happens a lot, and it's one of the reasons why people like myself have a difficult time engaging with fandoms and communities, because if you remember the last time I did a speed paint video, I mentioned how the Dragon Ball fandom has become divided. It's the same thing, because not only are there so many different versions of that series, but also some of the showrunners love talking crap about the other versions, and all that does is radicalize fanboys into this toxic gatekeeper mentality. I like to call it the Eltingville Club, but it basically is the same thing that's going on with all these reboots. And I understand, even if these reboots were not being made, you would still have fan brats hate watching and gatekeeping. But the difference is that studios are now encouraging that type of behavior just for publicity. Even though I am giving the studios a lot of flack, I want to make it perfectly clear that both sides are in the wrong. The studios are in the wrong, but the fanboys are also in the wrong. Now, as much as I hate talking about this, the best example I could give would be Star Wars. And I don't want to dwell too long on this, but basically, with Star Wars, you have fans blaming the studios and studios blaming the fans. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of critics who have made valid criticisms about the sequel trilogy, whether it's the mistreatment of the cast or the underwhelming conclusion. I completely agree with those criticisms, but I really hate to be that person, but despite all of the valid criticisms, some of the most vocal haters of all of these reboots are toxic fanboys. And it's not like a new thing either. The Star Wars fanbase has always had problems. Like, I remember back when the prequel trilogy and the remastered releases came out, and I will agree, as horrible as that stuff was, the backlash was unbelievable. George Lucas was getting harassed by fanboys, telling him that he ruined Star Wars. And I'm willing to bet that that might have been the real reason why Lucas sold Star Wars to Disney. The difference now, of course, is that studios are encouraging this type of behavior, and now fan bases are becoming way more split up because of it. And if you're curious how exactly, it goes like this. Fanboys are usually, well, not to be mean, but quite a few fanboys are very lonely, and people that are lonely can be very impressionable. I'm willing to bet that some of these fanboys were very different people before the studios began calling everyone toxic, because that's going to make them identify with that mentality, and they're going to start delving deeper into toxic behavior. Of course, there are plenty of ordinary people who can either love or hate these reboots, but this is just an example of how badly that all of these fandoms have been split up. You can easily get into all these franchises and ignore all of the fanboy bullshit, but for some people, it can also be beneficial to engage with others who share the same interests. But I'm not sure if these reboots are really helping. They're not always bad, I will say that. You want to know a reboot that I really loved? You want to know what my movie of the year was? Godzilla Minus One. It's a reboot, but it does an amazing job at updating the Godzilla franchise for a new generation. I think all of these studios, all these Hollywood studios, they need to watch that movie and learn from it. It does not talk down to the viewers, it does not go out of its way to offend anybody, it does not bait the viewers with nostalgia, well, maybe a little, but not too much. It's even become one of my favorite Godzilla movies ever. It's definitely one of the most well made. Godzilla Minus One is a genuinely good movie. I was going to review it back in December, but like everything else, I just didn't have the time to do it. But since I'm talking about it now, let's just say 10 out of 10. But since I'm technically talking about nostalgia bait movies, you want to know a movie that actually did a good job at it? That would be Spider-Man No Way Home. I actually thought No Way Home did a fantastic job at uniting three generations of Spider-Man fans. That's how you bring fans together. I also really enjoyed Detective Pikachu. I might not be the biggest Pokemon fan anymore, but I really like that movie. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I also really like the 2017 Power Rangers movie. I'm not a big Power Rangers fan either, but I don't think that movie deserved all the hate that it received. I don't know what people were expecting. I mean, it's a Power Rangers movie. It's not going to be Citizen Kane. But it always just feels like a pattern with all these reboots and the negative publicity surrounding them. That's the reason why I have no interest in a Thundercats movie, because I already know it's going to be the same thing all over again. 
I mean, what would a Thundercats movie even be like? Would it be live action? What would it look like? Would it look like Cheetah from the Wonder Woman sequel? I mean, maybe it could work if they were to do it right, but I just don't see that happening. And I think the studios are thinking the same thing. First of all, we already know it's going to be Warner Brothers because they own the rights. And with Warner Brothers, I don't want to sound completely negative. I, I enjoyed the Batman movie with Rob Pattinson. I enjoyed the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. But this is the same studio that makes a lot of disappointing films, like the Mortal Kombat movie, that new Willy Wonka prequel, and not to mention all of the low-effort DC films they keep making. If they ever do get around to making a Thundercats movie, I just do not trust Warner Brothers enough to do a good job. Maybe I could see it working if it were like an animated film. Maybe they could even do a new series, kind of like that Skull Island series on Netflix. I know, I'm not that creative with ideas, but I think it would still be better than trying to do a live-action cinematic Thundercats universe that's just going to fail and cost the studio millions and divide the fan base. There's a good chance that it'll get made, but we'll see what happens. Again, don't take anything that I'm saying too seriously. This is all just entertainment. I, I just wanted to share my own thoughts on reboots of old franchises. And I, I'm sorry this video got delayed so much. I had a real difficult time while editing. For some reason, the footage I recorded of the drawing, you can probably tell, but for somehow it turned out really compressed looking. I don't know why. I tried to fix it, and I guess it looks okay, but I'm going to have to do some more messing around with the settings in OBS so that it doesn't happen again. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. I'll see you all next time.